Okay. Welcome to the Prospectors Radio Show, the talk show for our community. Please welcome Rich Cooley, Indiana Gold Hunter, Dennis Dayton. Rob Boy Gold, Jaron Wheeler, and your host, Tim Grimes. We hope you enjoy tonight's show and thank you for tuning in. What's happening, fellas? Not enough. It's Sunday. Oh, now Dennis shows up right after the intro. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Denny, the she Just missed it. Just What's missed that? the intro. What's oh. up? What's up? What's up, fellas? <laughs> it's Sunday, the week before the great pan off. Yep, it's Sunday, 324, March 24th. Yep. Are you guys ready for the great pan off? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm ready for the great drawing. Dennis, you shaved? <laughs> okay. Wait. Why did you shave? It's not like a shave month or something. Must have had to have a fit test or something. Now uh, you see these, see these spots on the side of my face. Yeah, ish. My face is real red. Yeah, your face is real red. Yeah, I had to go. I had to go get it checked. I got skin cancer. Oh, come on, really? Yeah. From what being out in the sun too much. I don't know. I got, I got this stuff. I got to put on for ten days, and ouch. Uh, hopefully, it goes away. <laughs> so you have to shave. Yeah, you have to be able to put this cream on your face. Yeah. All right. Yep. Good luck, brother. Hear me. And then I got some other cream in case the burn get it gets too too much of a burn. And oh, so this stuff actually makes your face burn to peel it yeah. off. Yeah. Something. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So. Ow. Hopefully it goes away in that step. Yeah. 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 It will. It all be good. All good. Okay. But you're looking mighty spiffy. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Glad you made it, brother. <laughs> well, I I had to, I I got here about we rolled in about ten after and then come to find out. That my phone wasn't even charging. I was down to like under ten percent. I was like, "crap!" So I, I ran in real quick. I plugged the phone up on my quick charger. So I think I got it up to just over forty percent. Well, you so got hopefully it'll last. You got it plugged in now. Yeah, we're doing it. Huh? You got it plugged in now while we're doing it, right? No. Oh, you I'm can't fine. have it plugged in while you're having. It? I guess I could. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'll, I'll get. Yeah. That way it's charging while you're... Yeah, that's yeah. why you're charging while you're doing it. I yeah. mean... Yeah, makes sense. That's that's so when is, when is this panel thing? Is it next weekend? Next Sunday. The great oh, American okay. panel. Yeah, that's the Sunday I got to work too. <laughs> oh, you don't think you're going to make the great American pan off? Uh, Having a ring drawing next week too. Yeah. Yeah. Great American pan off and the ring drawing live. So speaking of, so we did meet our goal, yeah, but our we're going to let it run another week. If anybody yeah. wants to still get in, get some more tickets right. or get their first get tickets. Or... Yep. And I did want some good. today. All right. Rich just got his. So next Sunday, we'll do the great pan off ring giveaway. Yeah. All the time. Someone, if someone will remind me on Thursday on actual payday, instead of like three days after when I'm broke, I can get some tickets. <laughs> hey, I did remind you, but it was uh, Friday morning. So it was after payday. Yeah, I, I think it was more like Sunday morning. <laughs> well, you must have checked it then, because when I sent it, it was Friday. <laughs> when, Dennis? Thursday. 28th. Yep. What time? Uh, morning, early. I'd like to get some tickets. Okay. Oh, All right, well. Before next Sunday at the great pan off. <laughs> I'll right. set my timer, Dennis, for Thursday. Well, actually, you're three hours ahead of me, so set it for Thursday. Yeah. I I hear even the great legend Smokey is gonna make it to the pan off. Dennis, eight o'clock, okay? Yeah. AM. Eight o'clock a.m. He said early. A.m. Early. Yep. A.m. Perfect. Yep. Rich just said a reminder. He's gonna call you. Oh, 
Reminder, remind Dennis about tickets, 8 o'clock Thursday morning. Because I'm actually off Wednesday, Thursday, so that'll be perfect. Well, there you go. You're getting a reminder. Well, it'll remind me. All I got to do is text you. Easy peasy. Okay, uh, well, you guys, cause I'm going to go get my cord and plug Go get your cord. Stuff. Go get your cord. I'll be right back. Okay. We'll say hello to our YouTube chat. We got uh, Bigfoot Prospecting, Matt, John Hunt. GoPro Unlimited, Jeff, uh, Weigold's in there, <laughs> yeah. Charles Hansen, uh, Ken is in there, and we got BMX BMXer Don. What's up, guys? And we got Lee over in GPS, Smokey, Jeff, Randy. Uh, now, can can Randy everybody that's gonna attend the great Sunday? pan off shout out say they're going to be here with their pan <clears throat> i want to know how many we're going to have how many how many people's going to do the great pan off <laughs> oh, you're going to have all of us all of us mm -hmm. maybe six pray right so trying, to, trying to figure this out <clears throat> yeah I want to hear who's all doing it. Just say, I am, I am, I am, I am, I am. Or me, 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 me. I just would like to know. Okay, I'm still, still watching. Jaron, you watching YouTube? See if anybody's yes. saying they're going to. Well, so far it's just us six. Nobody's mentioning nothing in. Uh, Not yet. Right in. Yeah, say yeah. Alaskan Gold Hunter. What we're gonna do is, if you got some material that you want to pan, you can join us on uh, Sunday night in the Zoom while we're doing it live on YouTube. And you got to put your camera on your pan, and, and it's everybody's got a pan. Just while well, we're having the show, you just we're having the show, and we're gonna pan. Snuffer and yeah, you guys know who that is. Who who is Alaska Gold Hunter? That's Justin from Whitewater. It's who? Justin, Justin from Whitewater. Nice. Justin from Whitewater. Yeah, from the show TV show. Justin. Yeah, we've had him on the show. Justin. Oh yeah, I recognize him now. Oh, I can't remember. <laughs> Sorry, just big bushy beard. Sitting in front of the camera there, uh showed us some samples and stuff today. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah no. Last season. I'm like, wait a minute. Justin on Whitewater. I'm thinking about this season. I'm like, you got Dustin, <laughs> you got uh Yeah, not Dustin, Justin. You got, you got what you want to call it? The Paul and Wes. You got Carlos and you got uh, John or Jim or J J yeah, yeah. Justin, it'll be the same time as it is right now, but next Sunday. Okay. All right. So let me see. All right. I, I it looks like like uh Randy Scotty, Indiana Gold Getter Scotty. He says, "Hey, hey, yeah." So I'm gonna count that in as a me. Randy says, "Me, me." Uh, so Randy's definitely in. Is Ray doing it? I I don't oh, see yeah. in there yet. Ray said yeah, Ray started the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, it's his, it's his idea. He better be. Guys, there's nine. <laughs> so, if not, I'll bombard his phone. So <laughs> I'll see how many. How many will be doing the great pan off? <laughs> See Hello, uh, Don G and Randy Scotty Tony. I, I, uh, he oh, says you he can't, can't guarantee with work, but he he will if he's free. Justin. Okay, cool. That will be awesome. More the merrier. That will be awesome. Thank you. Oh man, what else is going on? I'm looking forward to this. It's gonna be fun. <laughs> It will be quite interesting. 
to say the least. And then one month or one Sunday next month, we will be having Nikki Bailey and probably her, her new husband, Steve Rivell, that's on uh, Outback Opal Hunters. Outback Opal Hunters. You know how long I've waited to have one of them Outback Opal Hunter people on the show, Jaron? Like since that show started. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. It'd be great to figure out how they, they're, you know, how easy it is for them to go out mining. You know, they, they, of they, they, the troubles that you have yeah. to get through permits and all that. But yeah, once, once you figure out where you're looking and 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 digging and boom, I've always wanted to pick their brain about it. Yeah, it's like, oh man, we've never had none of them outback up hundred people on the show. Yeah, and it's like you know, speak you know, speaking of opos, I was uh, looking at an article earlier today, which we'll probably I'll talk about uh, next month. Roger uh, about gym prices. About what kind of prices? Gym prices. How oh, much gym prices. go for? And I think Opal was going for like three, three million per kilo. Wow. What? And their most expensive one they ever sold was, I, I, if memory serves me, I think it was between three hundred thousand a million, just for one stone. All right. Yeah. So we'll be looking forward to that. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder what their biggest. Stone weighed. Yeah. Yeah. We always go, what's the, or not, uh, or how it used to be, what's the biggest piece of gold you ever found? <laughs> it's like, what's the biggest opal you ever found? <laughs> how many carrots was it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It'll be cool. I look forward to it, Jaron. Good job, Jaron. It's Thank just you. amazing to me to <laughs> go out and have these big power rocks and then you just happen to dig in the right place or know where to look find a pocket or something it's just cool uh, that's it's crazy i think it'd be fun to opal mine in australia <clears throat> it might be a little bit toasty but it would be kind yeah. of, it'd be kind of fun wouldn't it it'd be different <clears throat> far cry from what we're used to yeah but it a little terry it, it definitely would be fun to try it Good job, Jaron. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. She, uh, last time she was on any show, she had like just a table full of opals. So, wow. She'll definitely have something to show off. All right. Cool. I want to see you. That'd be sweet. I look forward to it. Just keep remind me. Okay. <clears throat> remind. Yeah. As soon as I get confirmation, I'll make a little. Right. You'll make the thingy flyer thing, advertisement thing. Uh, Okay. Remember, we gotta we gotta get uh, Lee booked on the show too. Yeah. All right. Your hand. You gotta tell him when. Okay. Well, it'll be after the that seventh or something. I'll let you know. I'll let All you right. know. Or me or Jaron, I'll let you know. Yeah. 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 Just somebody let me know, and I'll get it on a calendar. The calendar. Right. Roger. Yeah. Make up yeah. make up Lee, pictures Lee. and stuff. Cause Lee, what is he in YouTube right now? I don't, I, I don't know. He's not in GPS. So he might be in YouTube. But yeah, we'll get Lee on here. Uh, he was on, on both, I think. Oh, I didn't see him. Okay. Oh, cool. Yeah, we'll we'll get him on here. <clears throat> Hello, Banshee Mining. We sure will. So, Jaron, did you have your watch party the other night? Yes, we did. All right, tell me what you guys learned. <laughs> <laughs> um to make sure you watch where your tailings are going and <laughs> and <Dan. laughs> that was like yay watch your footing watch where you're walking <laughs> watch where you're walking on three rocks and dan <laughs> that was quite an interesting show last week hey. what did he what did he call that mouse the great grizzly <laughs> mouse or something uh, well, at first it was yeah something like that i can't remember <laughs> i actually thought there was really a bear in there <laughs> wait was she yelling and carrying on that <laughs> <laughs> was a mouse <laughs> oh my god geez that's just funny <clears throat> but yeah that's it that was the gold that they're pulling <clears throat> out oh my god and God. you know, yeah, you see that though, right? Interesting. And the color. Yeah, that red. Yeah. 
Yep. Yeah. That must be really ancient gold. That's what they said. It's ancient gold. That red gold's ancient gold. It's just, that's weird, though. It almost don't look like gold. What was that on, Tim? <laughs> on that uh, white water. Oh, okay. Yeah. What it is, Rich, is just uh, when they hit that red layer, that's when they've, that's the indicator for the gold. Right. Oh. Yeah. You get that orange juice. Yeah, that's what I call orange <laughs> juice. <laughs> yeah. And then it's like, booyah. But still, again, just pickers. Pickers, pickers. Interesting, but they use thousand rods to get onto it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> you, you, just a naysayer on thousand rods, Ralph? Mm hmm. <laughs> Where's uh, Swifty at? He, he, his squirrel got away. The one, the one that powers his internet that runs around that cage. <laughs> <laughs> it escaped. <laughs> So a squirrel had a heart attack. <laughs> yeah, so he has no internet. <laughs> so he had to go to the pet store to buy another one. There's our buddy Thomas Pennyweight. <laughs> hey, maybe one. Thomas can get on Sunday night. And Wait till next week. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got another squirrel. You have to trap another one. Yeah. He's like, why ain't I got no internet? He went outside. The squirrel was dead. He's like, oh, man, guys, I ain't got no internet. My squirrel died. Like, okay. <laughs> 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 like yep yeah it's really wires <laughs> uh, that really happened no <laughs> oh no he's got some bad weather out oh. there right now he said he had a storm and it blew out his internet what about what about <laughs> this new show tim that that anybody watch it? about what rich the new show <laughs> the new show Backyard uh, Gold. Oh, I, I have not seen that yet. Yeah, American Backyard. American, what is it called? America's Backyard Gold. Yeah, yeah Backyard Gold. Well, tell me about that, because I have not seen that one at all. I don't know. It did Dave, I guess, is the one that's on it. Right. Dave Turin? Yeah. yeah. And he goes around to certain areas. I guess he was in California, I don't know, the week before. I don't know about this past Friday. But the it week was Georgia, uh, California, and they were sniping and doing all kinds of other stuff. Now this week yeah. they were in Georgia, you said. Yeah, Georgia, Georgia and Alabama. And for the... and tell me, what did he do? Seemed a little more realistic with their prices this time. Okay. Yes. <laughs> but again, the whoever's writing the script. Is not really proofreading, and whoever's supposed to be proofreading should know. Well, what, like Dave Turin. What kind of equipment <laughs> were they running? Uh, I, I remember one guy was running a shaker table that actually shook. <laughs> okay, this time he was it was a shaker table, a cleanup table. Hey, right. <laughs> but wait, so. wait, wait, wait. He he was using the shaker table. And he called it something else, if I remember correctly. But what kind uh, of equipment were they using it to find the gold? Well, uh, one guy had a combo high banker dredge. Um, other guy sluicing. Uh, I can't remember all what they were using. Okay, you had the first first group was panning. <laughs> they were in the river panning on private property, and he didn't mention you you have to get permission. From the landowner in order to get into the river to, pro to, to prospect. Okay. Uh, and and then you had one with the high banker, which Dave Turin said, I've never seen one of these before. Hmm. That never seen what? <laughs> what did he never see, Rob? A high banker dredge combo. High, high banker dredge combo. Oh. Well, I guess I'm being out west. Maybe they don't. <laughs> um, Big wash plants and dry washers. Well, he's so far in the two shows, he just showed that he's not really a prospector. He's a, right, because op, he's he, a truck operator. So right, he's not familiar right. with any equipment or anything. Right, because hasn't he been to like 30 gold shows? He should know what all that stuff is. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, yes, they did show a guy that was using a six-inch pump uh, dredge. 
Okay. And one guy had himself a pretty neat looking jalopy of a uh, trommel setup. Okay. And pretty good ingenuity on that. And they helped him out in the uh, the hopper situation. So I thought he's supposed to be teaching. Yeah, right, right. I thought he's supposed to be teaching him how to recover. No, I mean, he's <laughs> not. <laughs> not educated enough. <laughs> Wait a minute. No. Wait a minute. That, the, the, the show is geared towards more, hey, this is where you can find gold. Trust me. That's it. It's more of like interviewing these YouTubers and stuff and it's you know, okay. camps and stuff. He's not really teaching them anything. Oh, I thought he was like the teacher. I mean, okay. the one kid he did give him a suggestion. He does give some of them suggestions, but uh huh. He's not very mm -hmm. familiar with any equipment or anything. Yeah, see, that's what I thought it was. I thought he's going. Yeah, me too. Well, you know, if you change the angle of your box a little bit and slow that water down, you're gonna require you're gonna require like ready. much gold. Yeah, you know, and Randy says one yeah. of them was crevicing. I think I remember that. I've seen so many crevicing videos lately that I forget which is which. <laughs> okay, <laughs> interesting. I still, but, you know, the, the they did here. give the kid uh, where the the father son was doing the high bank and the dredge combo. The kid was going looking in the. Uh, the high banks areas to, to search for gold and he was trying to teach him hey and you start noticing more of this and which it's interesting because this episode they actually showed a uh uh how do i call it uh, hey six months in six months down the road this is what we're doing thanks a lot dave for helping us out you know oh really <laughs> yeah they didn't do that. I don't recall it last episode. Interesting. I I, I just haven't got to see the show yet because yeah. Know. And Charles says yeah, that was a uh, made from a lawnmower. Yes, the trommel. Uh, yes, uh, it was really cool. Yeah. See, I thought he kind of did like Freddie does, kept, but with just small scale people. Just go, hey, you know, yeah, I'm gonna help you find more gold. I'm traveling around, gonna teach you how to find more gold. Huh. Interesting. All right. Well, I haven't got to see it yet, so I'm going by what you guys tell me. Yeah, I haven't either. I keep keep forgetting about keep it. Forgetting. I'm always doing something Friday night. Now I can watch Gold Rush and Whitewater. They're on, on Max, but I don't know why this one isn't on there yet. Uh isn't well, it on Discovery? Discovery, right? Right. Yeah. Right. But so is Gold Rush and Whitewater. But I get to watch them on Max. Right, right when they air, it's on Max. Yeah, and I think what will happen with this, it, you know, at the end of the season, you'll end up being able to watch it. Okay, I hope so. So I want to see it. Yeah, for anybody who doesn't have TV or anything, just come in on Friday nights to goldprospectorspace.com. Click the Zoom link, and we'll be watching it live as it happens. Nice. Yeah, that's what you got to do. I'm always too tired, or I would. So you're going to be doing Gold Rush, but not uh, back. We'll be doing Whitewater, and then that comes on right after. It comes on right after Whitewater. Oh, the yeah. Backyard Gold does? Yeah. Yes. And that's what they call it, Backyard Gold? America's America backyard, backyard Gold. Yeah. America's Backyard Gold. Interesting. Uh, I think uh, Discovery UK on YouTube put a like a little trailer out here this past couple of days on... Uh, the latest episode it's like a two or three minute clip you can watch it huh interesting though i know a guy at work he's like hey you still prospect don't you i said well i will be once my health gets a little bit better and he said well you know that show's coming out and i'm like what show and then that's when he told me and i was like oh okay i'm gonna have to watch that okay well, you're gonna you have watch to start watching it, it was okay but it's no know. it's no oak island but you know it's yeah. It That's right. <laughs> that is correct. Yeah, I don't know. I can't judge it because I didn't watch it. So, okay. yep. Oak Island, baby. Right, Danny? That's right. I guess they kind of snubbed uh, Michael David uh, from iPan for Gold. They did film him for that show, but I guess it didn't make the cut. Why? I don't know. I'm not the producer or the oh, editor. Well, well, I want answers. Why wouldn't? Yeah, that's right. Because Michael's in Georgia. <laughs> yeah, he is. Yeah. Well, they did yeah. so much as film him, so. Right, because he was finding too much gold. <laughs> well, why wouldn't they? 
Oh, the how, other how do you know that? You talk to Michael or? Uh, he's, I just, on Facebook, I'm friends with him, so I could oh, okay. read, see his post about it. I wonder why they snubbed him. They did some filming, but they didn't broadcast it. Well, darn. Maybe you know, what the show? Later, later. No. You'll have to yeah, get the show. You'll have to... Uh, he's trying to help teach the history of that area where the gold that they're they're recovering, you know, yeah. people, our normal prospectors. One of one of the cool things that I liked about that episode was they went into the ice cream parlor and they went in through a little trap door and there's a mine shaft that goes right down. And they were pulling gold out. Well, that's cool. <laughs> and of course, it wasn't an ice cream shop back in the 1800s. Right. I guess back then it was illegal. So they had to build a building to conceal their, to hide their, their mining. Mining operation. Yeah. Interesting. Very interesting. Hmm. I'll be darned. I'll have to see this show. Yeah. I'll have to. I'm hoping it comes on Mac so I can watch it. <laughs> anyway, well, speaking anyway. of gold. Yeah, so I was going to say, how the damn gold price is looking? Right now it's at $2,166. Wow. Silver just under $25 at $24.64. Platinum at $898. Uh, palladium, $970. Rhodium four thousand one hundred and twenty five and the Bitcoin sixty seven thousand two hundred and forty dollars. Sixty seven thousand. Sixty seven thousand on the Bitcoin. Yeah, currently up five percent on the day, which it closes in three minutes on the for the day. Well it doesn't close, but that's when the new day starts. Right. Sixty seven thousand. Interesting. Very cool. Happy for Bitcoin. Happy for gold too. Still holding over two thousand. And silver wanting to wanting to play around the twenty five number. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's I was hoping it would hit twenty six. I hope it would hit like thirty six. <laughs> <laughs> You're not too picky, are you? Oh no. Or maybe like one hundred and six. <laughs> yeah. Wonder I wonder if it'll ever happen in our lifetime. <laughs> yeah. Silver is the new gold. <laughs> gold drops I've, to like as $20 some dollar. Jumped up a lot higher. Right. I know. You would think it would. Wouldn't it be weird though if it if they flip flopped? Silver went up to like two grand and gold went down to like twenty three. <laughs> oh wow. Well, what's weird is gold's at all time highs and silver is only about fifty percent of that. It's not, it's right. It's like high was $49 and 70 cents. And we're wow. only putting at $24. Wow. It, it, Wait, what year was it that silver went up to like $50 yeah, an ounce? 49. The, the what United, was it? That? Yeah. Do you know the year, Jaron? May of 2011. It was 2011. Wow. Huh. What was happening in 2011 that made silver shoot up like that? Uh, let's see. We were just getting out of the housing bubble. Well, that's before the 9-11, so that's... Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was before 9-11. You're right. That's kind of odd. Yeah. Oh, wait. 2011 is when you said the uh, highest, or... Yeah, it was highest for silver, yeah. Yeah, so we just got out of the housing bubble. And then, um... The, the need just for silver just skyrocketed. But Why? I wonder. Medical, electronics, automobiles, just about well, see, almost that's why everything. I'm surprised. That's why I'm surprised it's not higher than what it is right. because they use, I mean, they use a lot more silver in that stuff now than they do gold. Probably, yeah. Electronic equipment and stuff. So, I mean, that's just, that's what's really weird. How... Yeah. And back in the early days, you know, 50s, 60s, through the 80s, even into the 90s, they were using more gold than silver in electronic components and stuff like that. Right. <clears throat> just weird the way it just does. Yeah. Very, very strange. Is what I say. Very, very weird. Ah. 
I don't know. I don't get it. <laughs> this should still be 49. 49. 49. Yep. 49. It would be awesome. <clears throat> it would be cool. Anyhow, so Rob, I, you got some stories. Jaron, you got a story. Somebody's got a story I heard. Yes. Story, yes. story stories. Yep. Just, you, just you, Rob, or you and Jaron? I've got one or two. You got one or two. Rob's got one. Well, who wants to? The floor first. <laughs> uh, let's uh, have Jaron. Jaron? Yeah, since see, it's only got one. I got All right, Jaron, do you got a slideshow? Uh, let me see. There's no, there's not much to show on the picture wise. Well, you'll make yourself uh, uh, large if you need to, to screen, fill the screen. Yeah, there's no pictures really oh, on pictures. the screen. No. Okay. <laughs> well go ahead then take it away jaren let's hear it all right this one's titled government to investigate state zombie mines this is completely out of control huh? says a federal investigation into supposedly active but abandoned coal mines is set to begin in march after citizens law group of kentucky uh found that as many as 40 percent of the state's mines were left in this non-producing and dangerous state Inside Climate News reports. Uh -huh. The Appalachian Citizens Law Center, a nonprofit based in Whitesburg, Kentucky, released the new report on the status of Kentucky's zombie mines. Out of 126 mines that are active on paper, 48 of them have stopped producing. Of those 27, haven't produced anything for over five years, and some were left abandoned more than a decade. Wow. So, when a mining wow. company is done with a site, it's supposed to do some basic work to begin restoring the land. Uh, modern mining techniques involve cutting trees and remo removing soil on tops of the mountain, then dumping the debris into the valleys where it can pollute streams and headwaters. Meanwhile, on the site includes steep, dangerous cliffs due to the mine debris that's displaced. At the end of the mine's life, the company is supposed to build the mountain back up, plant trees and other plants and clean up the water. Right. Companies are supposed to secure funding at the beginning of the mining project so they can do this restoration work, even if they go bankrupt. Uh, right. According to Inside Climate News, many mining companies appear to be dragging their feet. Uh, it says, quote, some coal companies are idling mines and stalling reclamations to cut costs, wrote a group of eight lawmakers calling for an investigation by the U.S. Government Accountability Office. Because mine operators typically rely on coal revenue to fund the reclamation, the longer the mine remains idle, the greater risk that the operator might not have sufficient funds to pay for reclamation. When that happens, pollution from the exposed mine affects local waterways and communities downstream, not to mention the plants and wildlife harmed by the loss of the habitat. Inside Climate News previously reported on the issue in 2022 when it quoted senior environmental scientist Courtney Skaggs of saying, this is completely out of control and this is going to blow up in somebody's face. Thankfully, the federal investigation should shine a light on this issue, not just in Kentucky, but across the region. That's the first step in stricter enforcement to reclaim these abandoned mines. Uh, I thought they all had a bond that, that way it there was the money was set aside for that reclamation. Yeah. Yeah, they're supposed to. That's what I thought. I mean, but I guess they're not paying it. Unless coal mining's different, but I would think they still had to have a bond for reclamation. That way, if they did go belly up, all that money's secured. <clears throat> the right. land could still be reclaimed, right? Interesting, Jared. Hmm. But it's kind of odd that they've been, some of them been closed for a decade. Yeah, not, right. Not right. Done anything. What the heck? Yeah, right. Because <laughs> they got so much time to do it. They ain't gotta like do it in the first week after they close, but but still 10 years. Uh right. And the thing of it is, is they gotta take the time out of their mining season to right stuff. So if this coal mine just because you can't do it when the ground's froze. Right. So they must when the ground ain't froze, you're either prospecting or refurbishing. Yeah, know? that sounds like these mines shut down and they're just unless they hire somebody else to do it while they continue to mine on other property. Which that's what the bond should be for, right? They pay yeah. somebody else to do it while they're still doing their thing. Interesting though, Jaron. Yeah. 
Yeah, it seems kind of fishy though, because we keep getting here. Oh, we need coal. We coal power. We need coal power. And <laughs> all these are closed down because they're not producing and not. There's it doesn't yeah. seem to be the demand for it. So why do we? Right. Need it? I yeah, it's a whole thing's weird. Yeah. Yeah. It is the whole thing just don't make sense. It's it probably goes pretty deep. You know, not the mind. Oh, sure it does. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying. There's there's a demand for it. It just we're not producing anymore. We're buying it from other countries. Right. They probably paid them guys to stop producing it. Yeah, that's probably what it was. They just pay you, and you just stop producing coal. Thank you very much. Here's your briefcase full of money. <laughs> right. <laughs> probably. Just saying. Yeah. No. Mm hmm. I think they've regulated it so much that they can't. Could be. That's possible. Well, that's interesting, Jaron. It is mine related. So we like I like to hear about it anyway. Yeah. It's definitely interesting. Hopefully some other people are interested in it as well. It's yeah, good. It's not the most glamorous story for no, miners, it, but it's good no, to talk it, about it, that still, stuff. No, it's still mining. It's still yeah, mining. Absolutely. <clears throat> yeah. Wait, I see it. Because we see in the gold, you know, the gold shows that they people show up on the job and make sure they'll stop them right. And yeah. Operating to make yeah. sure they're reclamating and stuff. So, right. So, and these yeah. guys are just going 10 years and nothing's been done about it. Is it because it's in like Kentucky and these kind of places? They're just not as, you know, as. Yeah, I don't know. Strict about it. I don't know. You know. Yeah, it seems like from the story, it sounds like they're independent people that are trying to do it. So probably okay. the lawmakers weren't enforcing it. Right. See, so that's it's what it seems like. It's all about the state that you know where they're where they're at, where Alaska and Canada and stuff's really strict about it. Maybe these other states like Kentucky, West Virginia, coal mines, they're just not as no nope. and not as hard on them or so I don't know. Interesting. Maybe there'll be more to come. Maybe we'll find out more on it. Yeah. More to come. More to yeah, come. I'll keep my eye out. For yeah, keep your eye out. More I'll info about it. Because, you know, I would like to hear more about it. Yeah. Thing to find out. No. Yeah. Well, thank you, Jaron. Is that the only one you had, Jaron? Yeah. All right. Well, Rob, now what about you? Do you got a slideshow? Uh, yeah, I'm going to try to do this here. <laughs> Oh, you you are. Oh, hold on. Let us get you spotlight so we can see this fancy gold picture. <laughs> cool. Oh, there you are. Oh. Okay. Can you guys see that? Uh, a gold, gold, chunky that, nugget. That, that gold, gold nugget there. Quartz mixed in. Looks like yeah, it's quartz in it. It's pretty. That yeah. is pretty. It is. A detectorist strikes gold with the largest ever nugget found under English soil. Eh? Yeah, it's a veteran metal detectorist hit the jackpot when he turned up late to a group dig, only to stumble across the largest nugget ever found in England after just 20 minutes of searching. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Richard Brock, 67 had traveled three and a half hours from his home in Somerset in May of 2023 to join an organized expedition on farmland in the Shropshire's Hills. Okay. Despite his metal detector not in full working order, Mr. Brock, who has been metal detecting for 35 years, discovered the biggest find of his life after unearthing a 64.8 gram Gold nugget. Ew. That's a big one. Wow. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and post another picture here that you guys can see. Oh, that's it right there next to a. That's just a next to a, like a. Uh, something. Uh, I think it's one of their shillings or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Dang. And then here we go. One last one. Just got to do this here. <laughs> That's a, there we go. That's a big piece of coal. <laughs> wow, it is. Wow. What's that worth? It, is, today, it is now set to fetch at least 30,000 pounds 
ad auction and is believed to be the biggest find of its kind under English soil. Ah. Uh, so yeah. Scott, Mr. Brock said. Uh, Smokey says that's next to Wales, which has good gold. <laughs> where that was found. Yeah. Uh, well, Scott, you should be uh, okay, yeah. heading down there. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Brock said, I have been detecting since 1989, and I decided to join the trip as a similar previous one to Australia. It was canceled during a pandemic. So I drove three and a half hours to Shropshire, and I actually arrived about an hour late, thinking I missed the action. Right. At first, I just found a few rusty old tent pegs with his backup detector that he had a fading screen display. But after 20 minutes of scanning the ground, we found this nugget buried about five or six inches in the ground. Oh. Wasn't even, I was, wasn't that deep. <laughs> I was perhaps a bit too honest and started showing people. And then all of a sudden I had swarms of other detectors skin in the same area. <laughs> well, yeah, you think? <laughs> yeah. That's like look at the fish I caught here. All of a sudden everybody wants to fish in your spot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the truth. Right? Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yeah. He added that the machine I was using was pretty much kaput. It was only half working. And it just goes to show you that it doesn't really matter what equipment you use. If you're walking over the find and are on alert enough to what might be lurking underneath the soil, that makes all the difference. Uh -huh. Now, yeah. Now, how the gold nugget ended up in the Shropshire Hills near, I don't want to butcher it, but Muck, Winlock, remains a mystery. The area is an ancient landscape once under a prehistoric ocean, and hunters often find remnants of coral in the area. There was a large amount of rock that originally came from Wales, in which gold and copper were mined extensively during the Bronze Age. Uh, Mr. Brock's <clears throat> discovery was made on a site believed to have been an old track or road with rail lines running through it containing stone possibly distributed from Wales. The only previous bigger example in Britain have been found in either Wales and Scotland. The Douglas nugget found in Perthshire weighed 85.7 grams and another from shores of Anglesey weighed 97.12 grams. And the reunion nugget found in Scotland in 2019 weighed 121.3 grams. Wow. Malak Jones, the auctioneer, is offering a nugget for sale in a timed auction, which began last week and runs through April 1st. The nugget is estimated to sell for 30,000 pounds. Mr. Brock has said he will split the proceeds of the auction with the landowner. So if that one was there, there should be more there, right? You, you would, would think, think so. Right? I mean, come on. But if there was a rail line and let's say they were transporting that uh, ore down and okay. let's say an accident happened and some of it spilled and they thought they got it all and Boom. No, oh, that could have been. Yeah, but uh, I don't know. I would still be like all over that spot. But <laughs> you said they were <laughs> after they found that one. <laughs> ah. Well, I would imagine probably there, there, if someone else found it, a, another piece, I'm sure they, after seeing that, they kept their mouth shut. Yeah, they might have. They might just shut up, put it in their pocket, and kept detecting. And didn't yeah. Tell them. Yeah. Hey, look what I just found right here. <laughs> and later yeah. on say yeah i found it back there yep, yeah right found it back there amongst them trees way and, over and, <laughs> and see i don't know how that goes with england's laws where if you find a historic coin or or some relic from the 1200 
1500s and stuff like that, that belongs to the queen or the king now. What about gold nuggets? Does uh, that also go to the I'm king? I'm sure it probably goes to the queen. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It just I would makes you know. wonder. Everything else does. Right? <laughs> yeah. It sure seems yeah. that way. Yeah. So I would think it probably does. Oh, look at that. What is that? Know. Looks like a yes. ship. Yes. Yeah. What do you think? Looks like a ship to me. It is. It is. This is the most valuable treasure. A $17 billion Spanish shipwreck from 1708 to be recovered. <laughs> uh, centuries after the Spanish galleon ship, San Jose sunk in Colombia waters, and nearly a decade after it was initially discovered, the estimated $17 billion shipwreck is set to be recovered as soon as April. Oh, wow. According to officials. For the first time in history, a model of comprehensive public management of the archaeological site and asset of cultural interest protected by regulations and public mission missionality is advanced, the Colombian government said in a press release, which was translated Tuesday. Mm -hmm. The uh, 150-foot-long, 64-gun, three-masted galleon ship treasure is compromised or, or comprised of 200 tons of silver and emeralds, 11 million gold coins, wow. and it, an intact Chinese dinner service and porcelain pottery, according to the Colombian Navy's divers uh, findings back in June of 2022. Mm. In 2015, when the wreck was initially discovered, former Colombia President Juan Manuel Santos said in a news conference, this is the most valuable treasure that's been found in the history of humanity. Santos also paid tribute to the 600 people who were on board the ship during the wreck. The current Colombian president, Gustavo Petro, ordered the recovery to be coordinated by the Ministry of Cultures, Arts, and Knowledge, the Na National Navy's General Maritime Victorate, and the Colombian Institute of Anthropology and History, according to the release. Yeah. Uh, yeah let me go ahead and pull up another picture. Yeah. Ba -ba 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 -ba. So they're going to start recovering this stuff in April? Oh, that's a, pottery? As early as April. That pottery looks like it's in pretty good shape. <laughs> wow. The San Jose was sunk in 1708 by British warships while it was returning to Spain with a cargo full of treasure meant to help fund the War of the Spanish Succession, a European conflict that spanned from 1701 to 1714. The wow. shipwrecks Deep sea location, which remained a mystery until 2015, is near Cartagena, a port city of Colombia's Caribbean coast, the Colombian official said. In December, the former president announced the discovery of San Jose Galleon, which launched an international debate over the rightful owner of the ship's bounty. Colombia, Spain, Bolivia, the indigenous groups, and an American salvage company all had attempted to take legal ownership of the historic wreck, mm -hmm. which is now estimated to be worth $17 billion. According to court documents, according to what? Uh, from the, uh, according to court documents from the Colombia National Legal Defense Agency, Ordered by, uh, obtained by business insiders, U.S. salvage company, Sea Search Armada, claimed they discovered the location of the San Jose in 1981 and attempted to take legal ownership against Colombia 
for the recovery of the ship. Mm -hmm. However, a U.S. court declared the galleon the property of Columbia State in 2011. In 2018, UNESCO, the United Nations Cultural Agency, intervened when Colombia government attempted to auction some of the artifacts to fund the recovery costs. Shouldn't it be finders keepers? Yes. Yeah. It should be. Just saying. Yeah. In 316 years since the San Jose sunk, the ship has remained untouched aside from natural ocean water and tear. Right. So far, the entire discovery of the galleon San Jose asset of cultural interest and its archaeological evidence have been deposited without any variations other than that produced by the, mar the marine dynamics themselves, the occurrence and fauna, with no evidence of external interventions. The Columbia State will invest $17 million uh, 17,962 million pesos, which would equal out to about a little over a million dollars in U.S. Uh -huh. in the recovery process. So Colombia gets it? Yes, Colombia gets it. <clears throat> well, was Colombia out there looking for it? No. The guys that were looking for it and found it <laughs> to keep it. But I guess apparently it was Close by their borders, their oh, land borders. So I lost, I lost that five dollar bill eight years ago. It's mine. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He found it over in the neighbor's yard, but that's close enough to my yard. Yeah. No, it don't work like that. I found yeah. it. It's fine now. Especially after how many hundreds of years? Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Yes. Are them people metal detecting there, Rob? Oh, I'm not sure, but uh, okay, got it. you know, this is a another shipwreck story. Oh, no, is that a different shipwreck? Yes, this is a different shipwreck. Well, I got a question first. Yeah. Yes. So all that porcelain, you know, it's very tough to try to get that off the ocean floor without busting and cracking this stuff. Right. You almost have to have like a big basket and put each individual piece in there and yeah. lift it up out of the water without busting it. Right. Wouldn't you think? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah they have to. Why? Because they... there's no way you can stack them together oh. without breaking them. You know what I mean? I wouldn't think so. Right. Something being so it's always, weird how... it's always weird how they wait till they, till someone recovers it. They let them recover it, and then they, oh, no, that's ours. Yeah, it's been down there for how long? And they, uh, they didn't have people out looking for it. And and some U.S. vessel that does this for a living finds it. And now all of a sudden, oh, well, we want our shipwreck. Yeah, and they have all the charges and everything. Yeah, it's like, it. no, <laughs> we found it. It's ours. Finders keepers law, it should be. You know, it should, especially when it comes to the ocean. You find hmm. it's yours. Well, a lot yeah. of places they have to get permits and everything and to even do it. So I think majority of these treasure hunters know that they're probably not going to be able to keep it. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, you just want the fame of being the one that found it? No. Uh uh. I'd rather stay lost if I couldn't get some of it. If it ain't, if I don't get the treasure, I ain't going to spend my money and my time looking for it. And then find it, and then oh, gee, thanks for finding our ship. <laughs> I mean, you know, after all these stories, this happens time after time after time. I hope people learn their lesson. If you find something, smelt it down because gold is gold. I mean, you know, you know, this ship that found it probably had uh, those ROVs and su little submarines. They could have went down and plucked plenty of that gold and silver out and just went on their merry old way. <laughs> but they did it this way and they told them and now, bang, it's a lost treasure. You found it. It's yours. Plain and simple. I I don't care. It's just the way it should be. <laughs> they found it. They deserve to have it. 
Smelt it down and keep it yourself. You, and, yep. and every time they say, hey, look what I found, they lose it. They don't get nothing out of it. Right. So, I mean, that's stupid. Right. I mean, actually, yeah. I think it was my great, 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 great grandfather's ship, actually, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> Admiral, Admiral <laughs> Grimes was sailing that ship from Spain when it, when it, uh, <laughs> Was sank, so I, I wonder if I can claim the treasure. <laughs> That's Grimes. Admiral Grimes. Yeah, Admiral Grimes. Yeah, I'm just wondering if I if I can claim that. <laughs> we'll need to look in. Uh, I long lost great 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 great. great, great. Yeah, <laughs> Senor <laughs> Grimes. Eighteen forty six sailed. Yeah, right, right from Spain, Senor Grimes. <laughs> Yeah, I remember <laughs> it well. <laughs> I, I, should, I, I should stake my claim to it too. <laughs> yeah, just saying. If it's it seems that easy, don't it? <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, honestly, it does. <laughs> I don't know. Anyhow, go ahead, Rob. Sorry. <laughs> oh, no problem. No problem. <laughs> you know, it's it, it, you find something of the significant and historical value. Loose lips sink ships. Bingo. Keep your mouth shut. But if you find something that's got little value, but hey, it's pretty cool. Hey, yeah. Hey, tell the whole world. Right. Yeah. Look what I found. Yeah. Hey, hey. But 17 mm. billion, you said. <laughs> mm. Shut up. Don't tell nobody. 200 small gold bars. Yeah. One of yeah. The it's like, yeah. well, there was only uh, none when we got there. Sorry, guys. Uh, somebody <laughs> must not for me. <laughs> Here's a Chinese plate I found. You can have it, though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 uh, that their ship at there sunk in a... <laughs> <laughs> right, Dennis. <laughs> that would be it. Exactly how you tell them too. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Anyways, uh, <laughs> rare timbers from a 17th century Spanish shipwreck was discovered off the Oregon coast. I know them guys are metal detecting down there because of that, Rob. <laughs> well, I'm sure. I, that guy and, looks like he's got the metal detector stamps. Yeah. <laughs> Don't and he? When you when you listen to me tell the story, you're gonna sit there and think about one particular movie. All right, go for All it. All right. Uh -huh. <laughs> In 1693, the Santi the Santo Cristo de Burgos, uh, probably pronounced that wrong, a Manila galleon loaded with silk porcelain and beeswax set sail from the Philippines on a trading expedition to Mexico. But the ship and its valuable cargo never reached its destination. Instead, the vessel ended up shipwrecked off the coast of Oregon, becoming one of roughly 3,000 ships lost in the region to the date. Uh -huh. Over the next two centuries or so, explorers Urchins, indigenous people, scholars. I don't know what it, um, anyways, uh, curious locals alike trade stories about the fabled wreck, which was occasionally visible along the Oregon shoreline. According to the Oregon's encyclopedia, Cameron La Folliette in 1813 or 1814, a fur trader. Alexander Henry detailed how members of the Clapsup tribe frequently exchanged lumps of beeswax fresh out of the sand, which they collected on the coast where the Spanish ship was cast away some years ago. The fate of the ship's crew is unclear, but the indigenous oral history suggests that some survived the disaster. Now, despite the widespread interest in the 17th century ship, tangible evidence of the so-called beeswax wreck remained elusive until recently. Now, this was a couple years ago, so last week, reports Tristan Romney from National Geographic 
a team spearheaded by the Maritime Archaeological Society, successfully recovered a dozen timbers from the Santo Cristo de Burgos, a wooden hull. The find makes the vessel one of only three Manila galleons identified in our North American West Coast, as well as one of the just three in the world with surviving wood pieces for the Oregon Coast Beach Connection. Hmm. Fisherman Craig Andes brought the whole fragments to the society's attention in the early 2020, just before COVID hit. He no first noticed pieces of wood while exploring sea caves near the beach town of Manzanita, uh, Manzanita in 2013, but only decided to bring it in experts after realizing that smaller fragments were on the verge of being swept away. Initially, the mass team was skeptical of on Andy's discovery, and Scott Williams, of the society's president, said he was convinced it was driftwood, as he told the National Geographic. To think that a 300-year-old ship timbers could survive the Oregon coast was just crazy. Then, however, tests revealed that the timbers came from an Asian tropical hardwood felled in the mid to late 17th century, a result that prompted Williams and his colleagues to take a close look at the caves. They confirmed Andy's suspicion that the summer, but were unable to retrieve, retrieve the pieces as caves were only accessible via water or a dangerous rock scramble. I'm going to post another little picture here, show you what one old timer found back in the day. Oh, wait. Wow. Oh, my gosh. It looks like Nolan's Cross from Oak Island. It does. Uh -huh. This is an un unidentified man holding a piece of beeswax that washed ashore in 1955. Uh, Credited to the Salem Public Library. Okay. Thanks to weather and the COVID related delays, the official recovery mission, funded in part by the National Geographic Society, didn't take place until June 13th. Mass archaeologists, staff from the cultural resource management firm Search Inc., and representatives of the Oregon Parks and Recreational Recreation Department and local sheriff's office secured the timbers in just 90 minutes, wrapping up the expedition before high tide. The last few timbers, I ended up staying behind to get those bundled up so I had to swim out to the jet ski because I got trapped where I couldn't get out any other way. Arch archaeologists was uh, telling a local Fox 12 uh, news station. Mm -hmm. um, let's show you another picture. Come on, let's see. There we go. Okay. And this is what was part of the caves. Oh, okay. According to a separate Oregon Coast Beach Connection report, the Santo Cristo de Burgos likely ran aground in shallow water, which rarely preserves shipwrecks. But storms and massive tsunami in 1700 scattered pieces of the wreck, perhaps depositing, depositing them newly recovered timbers in sea caves. Other possible explanations for the fragments. Improbable survival include the cold, less salty conditions of the Oregon's northern coast, and shifting sands that buried and shielded the timbers, writes the Astoria, it, uh, the historians Kate Frank Woods. In the decades following the shipwreck, objects from the vessel washed ashore, fueling rumors that the enamic wrecked existence. Per a timeline compiled by Mass, the flow of beeswax tapered off in the late 1860s, 
but an 85-pound chunk discovered in 1894, deemed the largest piece found in 20 years. The locals at one point disagreed whether the wax was natural or came from the shipwreck. By 1920, most appeared to accept the later scenario. Hmm. During the 20th century, the beeswax became the stuff of local legend, spawning stories of buried treasure and perhaps even inspiring Steven Spielberg's 1985 film, The Goonies. Continued interest in the ship led to the launch of the beeswax wreck project in 2006 and mass formation in 2015. The wooden pieces are a significant find, Williams tells the historian, that archaeologists haven't found what we would call the wreck. We don't know if something like the wreck exists. Pieces of the Egalian lower hole could still be hidden nearby. The team hopes to recover additional hole fragments from other sea caves in the near future. Well, this answers the big question. Probably not, says marine archaeologist James de Galga, according to the historian. But it's another step in a process that could potentially to lead to a few further discovery. Ah, that was a little long way for me. That's very cool. <laughs> yeah, it kind of did remind me of the Goonies. Yeah, and in, or in Oregon, huh? Yes, in Oregon. And here's another piece of the... Uh, That's a timber, right? Uh, part of the ship, yeah. Oh, that's oh, smooth. Inside the cave. From that water. Just, wow. That's cool. It almost looks like yeah. a rock. Oh. Actually, yeah, I'm going to see if I could... That piece that I found when I was out on Lake Monroe, um, uh, John Cougar Mellencamp owns property, a, a big lot, and it, it right off of Lake Monroe, uh huh. And when I was out there diving, uh, what was it? Five years ago? Hang on, I I think I know where it's at. Okay. Hopefully they don't try to say, "Well, that's John Cougar Mellon Camps." <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. Found it diving. Yeah, you did. Interesting. That's pretty cool, though. I, Oregon's got a lot of shipwrecks, don't it? Yes, yes. Believe it or not, it does. Man. Now, do you want a metal detect out in Oregon, Rob? Out there on oh, the yes. beaches? Oh, yes. I, I've been to quite a few of the beaches there, but I've never oh, have. imagined detecting it. Oh, you no. haven't detected them? No. If there's I mean, all it, shipwrecks, yeah, yeah. Do you think that would be one of them places like Florida when there's big storms that goodies would wash up on the shore. You yeah. know? And it kind of made sense where Whites was located at. They were in Oregon. Oh, that's it was right. Only a, uh, what was it, like an hour and a half, two hour drive to the coast. So, yeah. I definitely would like to go back up there. I'll go on up Newport, Cruise Bay, Astoria, Tillamook, you know, even down by Manzanita, or even further down by Gold Beach, where the original gold rush happened in Oregon. Right. See. Found it. Show us what you what you got. All right, hang on. bring it right here. Okay. <coughs> All right. It is. Like I said, if they try to, if they try to claim it's theirs i'm going to destroy the evidence right <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna go ahead and destroy it right now i'm gonna hide it right it. yeah yeah just go ahead and, and get rid of that dennis that way you know <laughs> <laughs> nobody's a wiser <laughs> yeah yeah that's what i would do too just go ahead <laughs> And eat that. <laughs> oh, Dennis, I can't believe I was sitting there in, in anticipation. I was to too. Like you, waiting to spotlight you, and then that's what I see. Dude, I was too. I was like, oh, what the heck did he find? Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
I thought, oh, he found a little it, a little ditty from he's gonna, <laughs> he's gonna destroy a whole box of evidence. Right? <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, he is. Now, yeah. Dennis, are you one of those guys that orders from that uh Swan's delivery? No, I go straight to the store. I can't wait for Swan. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I ain't waiting on that crap to be delivered. I'm going to get my dang gum ice cream sandwiches. You got ice cream sandwich eating machine. Ain't you? Uh, I think I have right now. There you go. You know it. Yeah, I, I thought he really had something too, Jerry. He, <laughs> he got me too. I should have known better. I know. I don't know <laughs> what the world he was thinking. <laughs> Now, here's a question. How many people actually laugh? Uh, yeah, well, I did. <laughs> I think Jaron did. <laughs> yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah, I, I kind of smiled too. and shook my head. I, didn't oh, I did. Laugh. I did, too, yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Jeez Louise. The boy's crazy. Oh, crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's very interesting, Rob. You got any more? That, that's it. That's it. But 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 that is not it. You got show and tell items tonight. Well, at least I got one show and tell item. Did, did everybody bring something to show to class today? <laughs> well, Dennis did. He already showed his his ice cream sandwich. <laughs> no, I didn't. Me neither. I okay. failed. Me too. No, my camera is not working. <laughs> Jaron, that's a, not a good excuse. <laughs> oh, going to be working next Sunday, right? No. Well, I don't know. I haven't tried to fix it or see what's going oh, on. It's got to be working next Sunday for the great American panel. Yeah. Well, that's what I was saying. I might just be the guy spotlighting everybody as they find something. Uh, no, no, no. You can be mm. panning too. Or panning. <laughs> <laughs> You could they pick. have gold in Utah. Don't even try it. He's got a pan load. He just don't want to show us that Utah gold. <laughs> That's all it is. He ain't fooling nobody. Mm. All right. Spotlight Rob. Let's see this. what he brought for show and tell today. Okay, Rob. Right. Well, I finally got my hands on one item I had needed for my motor detector. Ah. <laughs> Boom. That is... There it is. This is a six inch coil. It's a sniper coil. Sniping coil. Yes, it'll help me improve my metal e tech. Okay. I hope. So what especially in the parks. What oh, is that what that's gonna be mainly used for is in the parks? Yep. Now will that shoot deeper because it's smaller? No, or... it will help uh pinpoint targets a lot right. easier. Right. Right. It'll help so. pinpoint it better, but it don't change it the depth. It don't shoot deeper. It's just uh, okay. Pretty cool though. And what yeah. kind of detector is that on? Show us the detector, please. Show the class the detector. Uh, it's uh, <laughs> it's the mine lab CTX thirty thirty. I'll spin it around. Let us see it. No, spin the detector around. <laughs> I took it apart. <laughs> so <I> show this. <laughs> Well, that's a sweet detector you had. Did you walk around and go beep, 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 beep to yourself? <laughs> He's got a coil oh, yeah. on a stick. <laughs> coil on a stick. Rob's walking around. <laughs> beep, 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 beep. <laughs> hey, Rob, you find some nice. There you go. Oh, you do have the other half of it. <laughs> ET3030. <laughs> I think Ooh, you can. Rob. You should do a video, Rob, walk around with that, going beep, 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 go, why can't I find nothing? <laughs> Just tape your pinpointer to it. Yeah. <laughs> you should do that. Is it the it's same? Perfect way? short. I'm going to send this back to Mind Lab. <laughs> <It's> not working. <laughs> that would be funny. I would watch it over and over. <laughs> Well, that's cool. So, did yeah. you use it yet? Oh yeah, I've, I've taken it to the park, and and I I picked up a signal. If I had the bigger coil, I would have probably just 
I, I would have probably dug it anyways, but I may have walked away from it. But I picked up a signal where I heard a high tone and a low tone. Uh -huh. So the high tone was a little bit off. So I decided to cut the plug. And lo and behold, I have a piece of foil. And then I have my, I have a coin, a dime. Oh, wow. The foil was the low tone. The dime was the high tone. Oh, so you got both tones from it. Yeah. That's cool. So it, it helped separate the target separation. And your other one would not have done that? Oh, it would It would have just bounced all over. Oh, it would have just been going crazy. Yeah. And it's like, okay, whether I dig it or not, yeah. Right. Well, that's pretty neat then. Yeah. Man, well, awesome. Good that you got it. See? That is pretty cool. Mr. Detector, the, you will be on a show like Oak Island someday, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> Here? <laughs> but, but you don't watch Oak Island, do you, Rob? No. Come on. <laughs> Admit it. You know you do. No. i seen you wearing those I love Gary Drayden shirts or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> What, what, what does he call them? Um, Bobby Fines or something? <laughs> something like that. So I, <laughs> I'm having a Bobby day? Yeah, something like a C. You know, all his sayings. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> just saying. You're going to be on one of them shows someday. Be, oh, you're going to be uh, their, metal, their metal detector guy. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that hurt. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know if I really want the uh, KG and ringy experience. Oh, that was a wait, you do or you don't? <laughs> no. Wait, why not? I like KG and ringy, <laughs> they're nuts. <laughs> yeah, they're a little too nuts, and I think they could do it for the show. <laughs> Is their show still on? Do they still have a show? Is it still on? No, they don't, or they may have, I don't know. I haven't seen it in a long time. Not right. I haven't <laughs> but I know their website's still up. Is it? Uh, well, yeah, they're, they're Anaconda something. Yeah, something. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I wonder if they still got their show. Anaconda Trading Company. Because uh, I found <laughs> a, I found one of the tokens at the beach one time. Right. Yeah. And so that means that they were probably out there and they just cost one of the tokens and hoping somebody would find it. Cool. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I, I just wonder if they still got their show now. Now I'm interested to know. Does anybody in the chat room or on YouTube know? Do they still got it? I don't know. Cause they, I don't know. They were Garrett guys. Yeah. So yeah. I would oh, think, yeah. I would think they're still doing their thing. Huh. I don't know. Interesting. Well, yeah, you can run around and scream and holler and hoop and holler. <laughs> I, I don't want the attention. And wear your I love KG and ringy shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love KG and ringy on the front and I love Gary Drayden on the back. Is that his name? <laughs> Gary Drayden? Gary <laughs> Drayden, <laughs> yep. <laughs> Beep, 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 it could say underneath it. <laughs> People will be like, oh, what is that shirt all about? Rob say, you just got to know. <laughs> just yeah. got to know. Yeah, yeah. Thomas Pennyweight said he found one of uh, KJ and Ringy's tokens in Arizona. Did he really? So why did they just throw these tokens out willy-nilly and people find them? And do you get something if you find them? Well, they haven't sent me anything because I did mention to them on their Facebook, hey, I think I found one of your tokens. Right? Well, I bet you they, there's a prize or something, right? I don't know. What? Maybe I, I missed out. What, hey. <laughs> you, should, you should, and it don't say nothing on their website about it? No, no. Because uh, I was on Facebook, I made a post on I wonder, I think I found one of your tokens. That so that's cool. What's it say? KG and Ringy was here. Beep, beep, beep. 
Uh, uh, <laughs> ATC something on one side. And... Beep, beep, beep. <laughs> oh, Thomas said, nope, you don't get anything. He asked. You don't get nothing. <laughs> you guys find their tokens and you don't get nothing. <laughs> Not even a t-shirt. <laughs> Dang. Man. That's hard to believe. <laughs> oh, man. I would think Garrett would at least pony up something for that. You would think. I would think. I really would. I mean, at least a Garrett t-shirt or something. Man. Yes, I would have liked that t-shirt. Yeah, or a little metal detecting pouch or a pinpointer or something. Yeah. You know? Anything. Yep. I mean, come on. What's the odds of it being found? Yeah, yeah. Actually, I do have a picture of the tokens too. Let's see it. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to try to find it here on my right. phone. And oh, I want to see it. Want me to go all the way back down. To the yeah, I want to see it. Yeah, if you could find it. Oh yeah. Yeah, I just have to scroll all the way back down. Uh, Zoom is a little weird. Yeah, I know. Zoom's a lot weird, but that's hmm. neither here nor there. But not as weird as Skype, thank God. <laughs> Just saying. Yeah. While he's looking for that, we'll talk about this real quick. Yes. We have uh, for oh. Utah people we've got Wasatch oh. Gym Society uh, annual largest annual gym and mineral fossil show, largest club show in Utah. Two dollars for adults, kids under twelve free. But if you notice down here, half off with the admissions, you can get in for a dollar, a dollar. How can you beat that? So this is April uh, 19th, 20th, and 21st. They have door prizes, Wheel of Fortune, rock bags, kids' table, demonstration showcase, displays, show and tell. Uh, How that for Crystals, rock, minerals, fossils, wood, gemstone, jewelry, dino bone, and much more. And Matt, I believe, said to his club... Uh, We'll be having a panning booth as well. <clears throat> that is cool. Dino bones. So they're going to have dinosaur bones from Utah there. Yep. There's a lot of dinosaurs in Utah, wasn't there? Yeah, we have yeah. a Utah raptor that's exclusive to here. Uh, don't you get the, like, the velociraptor and the, uh, uh, what was that? Yeah, what, what raptors were there? <laughs> there used uh, to be yeah. a, a fossil. Well, it's a raptor, it's a velociraptor, but it, they named it the Utah Raptor because it was one of the, it's in the family of the raptors, but it's unique right. to the Utah. Uh, <laughs> I, and there was some other kind there because there there used to be that fossil show on TV for a while and they were in Utah and they dug up some like big old, big old dinosaur bones and they weren't raptors, they weren't birds, they were, oh, I forget what they were, but they were cool. <clears throat> so Utah. That would be a fun show to go to. It's too far. Living during the days of, of that, you know what I mean? No, right? That would have been scary. It would have been. Now, Jaron, how far away is that from you? Is it a long ways away? Uh, well, South, South Jordan, so it's not too far. Are you going to try to go to it? Probably not. Oh, really? You don't, oh. You're not interested in that? Well, the Friday, I could go early. Uh huh. I have the watch party, so I'd have to be home. Oh, okay. Before that, okay. or could you do your watch party Saturday night? Well, no, because the one we watched live on. Oh, right. Okay, Roger. That I got gotcha. you. Yeah, but you'd be at the Wasatch Gem Show. Oh, representing us. Right, represent. Uh, I know Matt's going to be there because he's with his club, and I believe Jeff is going. So I'll see. You see both them guys there. Well, hopefully somebody comes back and gives us a cool report about the Wasatch gem and mineral. Yeah. It sounds really cool. You know? Yeah, it does. It does. It sounds like they got a lot going on there. Dino bones, gemstones, bottles. Yeah. How can you beat a buck? I know, right? Yeah. And it's a dollar with that flyer. One dollar. Wow. Oh, wait. How much is it to park? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they didn't say that, huh? They did not mention the parking. <laughs> You're right. That that's the scary part. Uh, it's twenty dollars to park. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> Interesting. Wow. That does sound yeah, cool. here's 
here's the picture. Well, let's see your oh. fancy fancy. Oh, it does say tr ATC trade coin. All right, you want to trade it. It's a trade dollar. So do you get to trade it for something? Should be. Yeah, it should be, right? It should be. Yeah, you guys should get something when you find them. Because yeah. what's the odds? Yeah, you should get something. Yeah, see? And, and then on the other side is the Anaconda Treasure Com. Yeah, that's 2017. KG and Ringy. Yeah. <laughs> They they should get you guys should get a prize. I'm just saying. How many of them have been found? I wonder. Right. And when you find them, that's the whole reason they should throw them out there. If somebody finds them, some lucky person finds it, you get a new ATC metal detector. Yeah. Just saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, honestly, I mean, come on. They got Garrett sponsors them. They could Garrett could give up a even a. Ace two fifty metal detector something. Thomas says his was two thousand fourteen. Oh, <laughs> oh, see, wow. Yeah, I think both of you guys should get prizes. Yep, yep. So maybe they just have like a limited number each year, and they just go around the country just tossing them. Maybe, but there go. You should still get something when you find it. Yeah. Yeah. This I I found this in my early days of metal detecting the beaches. See, that's a cool find. But it's cool enough that you should get a prize. Just saying. That's my opinion. You're throwing them out yep. there for people to find. They should get a prize when they find. <laughs> so Rob and Thomas should both get a cool prize from Garrett. Absolutely. Just saying. Yeah. Just saying. <laughs> Would be fair. Yeah, because Thomas never did anything. Right? And it's, you know, that's what's, what's weird. We got two of our people both found one. Thomas found one and Rob found one. That's, but how many other people can say they found one? Right. Yeah. So it's very, <clears throat> very, very cool. Where Tom, Thomas found his in Arizona? Yes. Places. Where in the heck in Arizona did he find it? <laughs> That's a lot of desert. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Yeah. What's the odds of him finding one in Arizona? I mean, that's a big, big area. Yeah. Strange. Yeah. I don't know. It's just, just, just me. I, well, the, the location where I found mine was, it, it's a state park and you can actually reserve a camping spot and pull your RV up to it and camp there at the beach. Uh -huh. And that's where you found yours on the beach. Yep. <sighs> so I imagine he probably spent the week there. And... They probably were there. Yeah. And it's like, oh, oh, toss one of our trade coins out here. After they took all the good stuff out. Yeah. Nobody will ever find this. I'm just going to throw it over here. Uh, I mean, what's the mm. odd? What's the odd? Well, he said he found it on a top of the hill with no gold. He found it on a top of a hill with no gold. In Arizona, in the desert. What's the odds? Oh, he says hmm. 2016, not 2014. Yeah, that's just weird. <clears throat> that's just weird. Yeah, maybe yep. they started in 2016. Yeah. What are they made of? They don't seem to stand up to <laughs> no, it didn't. very well. No, it's, you're right. it's copper. It's copper. Oh, it is copper? Yeah. Well. well. Well, they should have at least made them out of silver so you at least get some kind of a treasure. Yeah, <laughs> really. <laughs> that would be copper. That would be a prize right there. Yeah, because that copper, it, it won't hold up long, will it? Out there in yeah, L.A.? it I will. Guess it will. Yeah, like a penny. It will for a little while. Oh, it yeah, just looked like, look. looked like it was kind of uh, weathered or something. But Yeah, it looked pitted, oh. didn't it? All right. It looked like it was probably there for at least a year. Right. But salt water does eat up copper quicker. All right. It's just interesting. I don't know. It's just my opinion. I don't know how anybody else feels about it, but I think everybody should be dropping Garrett a little email saying, hey, you find these yeah. people should get prizes. Yeah. You know, pony up on some detectors or something or some pinpointers or pouches or 
trowel. Yeah, I think a pinpointer or something. Yeah, or a trowel even, a, a digging yeah. trowel. I mean, come on. <laughs> I mean, digging trowels, what? Thirty nine ninety five. The right. pin pointers, uh, one hundred and twenty nine ninety five. And their cost to make is probably about eight bucks. So you yeah, know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're out eight dollars. Sixteen, one for you, one for Tom. That's sixteen bucks. Yeah, they could they could post it on their little social media page that a couple of our trade coins have been found. And we're sending them out this cool prize. Blah blah blah. You know the <laughs> whole. Uh, you know, publicity spiel going on there. I'm just saying. Probably cause people to buy more of their metal detectors. They did something like that. I would think sales would go up yeah. at least a little. Yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah. And if they knew how many of them were spread out, they could say, now there's only X amount remaining. Yeah. Just a thought. Yeah. Just, just a thought. Yeah, that's all. Just my opinion. <clears throat> Great pan off. I'm ready. Ready. For <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I am. I'm ready for the, the old pan off. Yep. And don't forget, this is the last chance until uh, to get some more tickets. If you want more tickets for that <laughs> ring, we'll be yeah. doing it Sunday. Yeah, I hopefully, I, um, I don't pan off. During the pan off, we'll we'll spend. That would make it great. I tell you what, if I won that, I would give that to the wife because our anniversary is on April Fool's Day. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 you laugh, but it, it really is. <laughs> and it's been fun too, going throughout the years. I've got myself a little bit of trouble, but I've had fun. Well, it's April Fool's Day. I. I wide open for shenanigans <laughs> right uh-huh actually you know what speaking of april the first week of april when is uh when is our next show is the that 31st. on the first the 31st and then the seventh huh. yeah yeah okay actually i can wait till the seventh because we're going to talk about the uh, solar eclipse on that day oh yeah we got the solar eclipse coming it's up. supposed to happen on the eighth Hey, it's correct. Yep. Yeah. I'll keep They're that article for next. Bring that up because they actually have, because where, where I'm at, where, where I live, I'm right in the heart of where it's going to be the darkest. Right. Huh. And I am going to, I'm, I'm, I'm recording all of it. Uh, but they've got, there's, I'll have to take pictures. Because there are already some of these open fields as you're headed into Franklin on the east side of, of uh, 31. They've already got something posted up there, live bands, RV parking, tent camping. And I mean, I guess people are going to come in and stay for like a week. Yeah. And and they're put, I mean, it's, this is unreal what they're doing around here. I know they're saying that the freeways, the traffic's going to be all bottlenecked and mm -hmm. just that and it's like it's just an eclipse you can watch it from yeah, your yard it's it's not just an eclipse I it know. is this is nope. one that's yeah but you can around see. every you know five thousand years or whatever it right. is but you can stay home in your yard and watch it you don't have to travel and you know the sun's up there just look at it you'll see it you might not get the total view that you would in certain areas but it's going to be good enough you know, it'll be really good here. I don't understand this this whole they're like buy gas, buy milk, buy water, buy everything you need. It's gonna be like anarchy again. It's oh like, my gosh. It's like it's gonna last for three minutes. <laughs> Is it three or four? That's like three and a half minutes, something like that. Yeah. Something like that. Uh the actual where it's cut come right over it is like three and a half minutes. And remember, you don't have to look up to experience it. If you got trees around, it casts these silhouette shadows. I'll show you some okay. on, on the ground. They'll, that casts through the leaves, and you can kind of see how they're oh, all yeah. circular. That's, that's, kinda, that's cool. The sun and then the covered part. So can you, you can also look down. Yeah. So Are that's kind of cool. 
Can't you? That is cool. I think that's pretty neat. Or you could get them fancy glasses, or you could probably look at it through a welding hood. <laughs> I think that's well, yeah. Ain't dark enough. Or there's lots of ways, ain't there? Yeah. Just look at it. Don't need me glass. Just look at it. Just look at it. <laughs> Find you for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> No, do not look at it. We're only joking. <laughs> yeah. Hey, well, Dennis <laughs> Tim said to look at it. No, <laughs> only kidding. Get yeah, you. no, you got to wear glasses. Get some of these fancy. I want to look at the eclipse glasses. That's right. <laughs> I want to see the eclipse. Yeah, I'm going to watch the eclipse, baby. <laughs> or actually I do have something for real this time. What do you got? Hang on. You want to tell? Not another ice cream sandwich. No, I I'm I, I'm completely out of ice cream bar. I'm not spotlighting nothing until I see what it is. <laughs> right until you actually <laughs> see what it is. Boxer cards. <laughs> yeah, Ray's reminding us to uh spread the word about next Sunday in the GPS panning. YouTube night. Where have you been? Yeah, Ray, we've been <laughs> well, talking about it all night, brother. We are ready. Must be a delayed reaction. Or the <laughs> fake gold prospector space panel. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Everybody that's on camera must be panning. Pan, pan, panny do. <laughs> yes. If you ain't got a pan and some gold, you can't be on the Zoom panning thing. But we want millions and millions of people to be panning. <laughs> so we're gonna have the mic open mic night, and then everybody's yeah. gonna be panning. Yeah, and then we'll just do yeah. our regular thing while we're panning. I yeah. found it. I found it. All I right. found. But we're going to no. see what we before we spotlight I, you. I found it. Okay. Are you ready for this? I don't know if we're ready or not, truthfully. Highlight it, Darren. I'm not joking this time. I'm being for real. I'm just getting ready to yeah. no. disable your camera. Right, exactly. <laughs> Got your finger on the trigger, Darren. <laughs> oh! You actually do got something. <laughs> Clips 20. Oh, my God. Where did you get that? Oh, and you got your glasses? Okay. So you're uh, kind of red. You're going to be like one of them tourists standing out there in a Eclipse 2024 we shirt. Got, we got these from work. They gave us the shirts. Oh, wow. That's cool. And the, and the glasses. Well, that's awesome. So, so is everybody from work going to be standing outside looking at it? There you yeah. go. Yeah. Probably, uh, probably what what I'm gonna do is um told the wife, and I think on the back, I don't, don't see anything on the back. Just says, well, of course it's got well, it's got Sunoco on the sleeve, right? Oh, that's cool. So, but yeah, I mean that's they that's they gave cool her, that they did that for you. <clears throat> but I told the wife to get up a little bit early, and we're gonna go up to Sunoco because the, the out on the front, uh, the front there it's wide open, right? So yeah, we're we're gonna we're gonna have front row seats, man. It's gonna be awesome. Nice. I'll still be at work. Yeah, yeah we had a... like two o'clock or something. Is that yeah. two or three, Rich? Any idea? No. Uh, I I can't I can't remember right off the top of my head. I think it's probably right right around what Rich was saying about two to three o'clock. Uh, it's some somewhere around that. Yeah. yeah, I mean, last what was it? About four or five <laughs> months ago, we had another eclipse. Yeah, and it was it was all nice and sunny out, and then all of a sudden, it just just got a little darker and darker. Yeah. The street lights came yeah. on, and then boom, it got light real quick again. Now, ah. some parts of the United States, it's not going to get that dark, is it? Right. right. No. <laughs> so we'll get partial, and that's what it's we got. Be, it's, it's black here where I'm at. It'll be cool. Yeah, I think there's only like six or seven states or so where you get totality. Right. Yeah. Uh, us, Ohio, Illinois, 
I think. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was uh, Texas and New Mexico got the totality. It was 100% in that area a couple of months back. But right. The next one is going to be, what, 50 years from now? Like yeah. But they better hope it's not a cloudy day or there'll be no place <laughs> even nothing. <laughs> You're not gonna see a thing if it's over. Yeah, you yeah. know, and they're selling they're selling these tickets. Yeah, for that coming in, wouldn't that be sad if yeah. they paid all this money and then all of a sudden it's an overcast and it's cloudy, cloudy. And cloudy. Yeah, all day. Yeah. I mean, the only thing you can see is it just get dark. Yeah, yeah, probably. <laughs> Here, here's another little tidbit about when it, when it happens. If you're and it's not cloudy, you know, it's sunny. And you're near trees that have leaves on them. Look at the ground and see the shadow of the leaves. It's That's going to show. Yeah, Jaron just showed the picture of that. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's pretty cool. It's a cool thing. Ah, we'll see. We shall see. It's coming. It's quickly approaching. Yeah, it is. Eclipse 2024. It'd be here before you know it. Yeah. Yeah, Smokey says, imagine paying money to look at the sky. <laughs> I know, and that's what they're doing. It's like, it's crazy. And look at the sky. It's, well, it's, it's in one place. The sky. <laughs> they're, they're actually um, having a place you can tent camp, you can park an RV, you can. Uh, what what all was it? This, are they supposed to have a band or something, too? I have no idea that you can see the sign. I'm a, I'll take a picture of it and then yeah, it's just post it on the post it on the on the site because you get, it's just unreal what they're. Oh yeah, it's it's nuts. It's just like but you know making an event out of it. They're making money. They're making oh, money off the all these places that. are selling tickets to, to people to come in and stand and parking sit. people are paying hundreds <clears throat> to park their driveways. It's like, come on. Three or four hundred dollars, Paul said around here. That's fifty dollars to look at the sky. Air is twenty dollars extra if you want air. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want <laughs> you want to air with that? <laughs> Heck. What well, imagine the person that's spending twenty thousand dollars just to fly in, in in the sky to watch it. I, that's oh a, yeah, that's right. There uh Taking people up, you're paying a ungodly amount to, uh, in a helicopter and and uh, in the you're right in the planes. That would be kind of cool because <laughs> you'd be closer, but still, it's still three and a half minutes. And yeah, I think Delta added a couple more flights because the demand was so high. Wow, I don't know. To me, it's craziness. It is. You stand out in your yard, you see what you see, and you go back in the house and record it. Yeah, and it's over. And I think not... I'll charge. I'll <laughs> charge to what people to watch the video. Right? <laughs> I don't know. It's just weird. People are strange. They'll pay for. The... I don't know. I'm gonna drive all the way to Indiana for three and a half minutes to watch the eclipse. Well, you don't have to. You live in Ohio. No, I'm saying some people are doing. <laughs> oh I'm yeah. Fine. I it's like I I'll be at work. It, we got to yeah, take all, some, all the people. Indiana's the hot Indiana's the hot spot for some reason. At work, we got to take all the residents outside so they can see it. And it's like, okay. Oh man. <laughs> yeah, and then we got to take them all back in and then come home. And it's like, okay. 20 30 minutes to get them all out there. For it will take 4 minutes. For 30 minutes to get them out there for three and a half minutes of glory. <laughs> and half of them won't want to come out. And you got to make sure they got their glasses on so they don't go blind. And it's like, oh, this is not going to You'll probably miss it. And everyone else is going to watch it. Yes, it's not going to be good. I don't <laughs> know. I'm just saying. It's just my opinion again. <laughs> it's just not good. No. I don't know. It'll be on TV. You'll see it on, on the news. So we're on YouTube. It'll be all over YouTube. Yeah, but it's, it's not the same as thing in person though no it's not but there's less chance of blindness if you watch it on tv right <laughs> yeah just saying so i'll be out there watching it with my goofy glasses <laughs> yep 
<laughs> Just remember, folks, after the eclipse, please remove your sunglasses. Do not drive with them home. Yeah. That's a public <laughs> service announcement from us here at Prospectors Radio. <laughs> yeah. Do not wear your eclipse glasses while you're driving. They are not no. there. <laughs> These are the greatest sunglasses I ever bought. <laughs> it blocks all the sun. Yeah. <laughs> what was that? Uh, right. <laughs> you you know there's going to be some sort of TikTok video coming out with the uh, people driving around with solar glasses or worse. Right. right. Uh, welding goggles. You're probably right. That's the sad thing. I mean, people are already trying to drive or walk with Apple glasses. Well, huh? Wait. What? Wait. You mean with the uh 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 the, the Apple Vision? The three D, the big goggle yeah. things where you're in the the different world. Yeah. 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 Those. Uh, are one one town in, in Northern California is asking people. Please do not wear that when you're trying to cross the street. Why are they wearing them walking around the streets anyway? It, shouldn't you be doing that at home in your living room? <laughs> Apparently, they want to live the, the, the reality for a world, I guess. I don't know. Huh. But for the for the price tag, yeah, I think I'll wait till it's used. <laughs> yeah. But then again, it's still be high priced. That's crazy. Or weird. Just saying. Just saying. Okay. Anybody got anything else? Did we forget anything tonight? Um, be sure to tune in Tuesday night. Hang out live. Flash in your pan with Edge. Marvin, uh, he will be having what he's calling women of YouTube treasure hunting. He's had a couple of women's of the treasure hunting community out there. Uh, uh -huh. Tuesday at 8, 8 p.m. Eastern, he will be having hot mess fishing. Hot mess fishing. Cool, cool, cool. Sounds like uh, magnet fishing, what it sounds like. Is it? Uh, she's, I don't know if she magnet fishes, but she actually fishes fishes and then metal detects. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Well, very cool. Sounds like mm. an interesting show. Be sure to check it out, everybody. And on that note, we want to thank everybody for tuning in. And don't forget the great pan off next Sunday. We hope to see you all here. Get your pans, get some dirt, get your cameras, and be ready gonna be a lot of fun so just thank ray okay so on that note we're out of here peace out everybody. Go. Night, everybody. Night, guys. next week bye see ya be sure to tune in next sunday at 7 30 for another great show for updates and more info please go to www.prospectorsradio.com pants off look at with your 